All right, hello. Dr. P here from my dining room. Um, hopefully you guys can understand this lecture today. Feel free to email with any questions. Um, again, I'll be using Canvas to keep things um, updated, uh, so please check the announcements there. I'll try to email um, as, uh, as, as well as um, uh, post things on Canvas, but Canvas will be the primary uh, go-to place for information. Um, and I'm going to work really hard at keeping you guys in the loop. Um, you know, this obviously is an unprecedented situation, and um, probably the last thing on a lot of people's minds is learning chemistry, but we're going to do the best we can and get through this semester, and um, we'll go from there. Uh, so anyway, uh, in this lecture, I wanted to talk about complex ion equilibria. All right, and what's a complex ion? Well, a complex ion is an ion that consists of a metal ion in the center attached to one or more um, molecules called ligands. Well, I guess a ligand could be an atom, but anyway, uh, complex ions. A complex ion is a metal ion bonded Ligands are uh, molecules that act as um, Lewis bases in their interaction with the metal. And we'll talk more about that um, in the next chapter, uh, chapter 21. So ligands are molecules that act as Lewis bases. So an example of this could be water. So water has two lone pairs available to donate to um, a, a Lewis acid. And most metals are Lewis acids. They're electron deficient. And so one of these lone pairs can then donate to uh, the metal, forming what's called a coordinate covalent bond. So let's just look at an example here. You can have silver, Ag+. Plus. And then I draw it just like a um, regular covalent bond, but it's actually called a coordinate covalent bond. It's a little bit different. It's, um, uh, it's a little tricky how to describe the difference. You don't need to worry about it um, for right now. All right, so this is our coordinate covalent So in this case, our complex ion would be silver bonded to NH3 with an overall positive charge. Now really, the positive charge is kind of uh, centered on the silver there. So these complex ions, uh, of course, have their own equilibria associated with them. We've seen a lot of equilibria so far this semester. Um, Oh, there, there'll be more, don't worry. When we talk about electrochemistry, we'll revisit um, delta G and uh, K. Um, so let's take a look at what goes on with the formation of these uh, complex ions. So I'm going to step back just so you, know, you can pause and uh, jot this down if you want. Okay, let's go ahead and erase here. We'll look at, let's say, um, let's just look at the formation of a complex ion. So let's look at the formation of a complex ion. 
So we'll take silver metal, sorry, not silver metal, silver plus ion, that's aqueous, plus NH3, our aqueous ammonia there. And so that will be in equilibrium with our EGNH3, our silver um, ammonium complex. And I'll put parentheses here and give it the positive charge there. And that's aqueous. And of course, we have a K associated with this. And so typically, they're called KF. And KF here stands for a formation constant. Uh, this is going to be KF1, so KF comma 1. Uh, and in this case, according to my notes here, it's equal to 10.1 times 10 to the third. Sorry, not 10.1, 2.1 times 10 to the third. Sorry about that. See, just like regular lecture, I make random mistakes here and there. Anyway, uh, it turns out that for this particular uh, species, for silver, um, you can actually get another uh, ammonia bonding to it. So we can have AgNH3 plus aqueous plus another NH3 aqueous. Give AgNH3. And here, Kf2 is going to equal, in this case, 8.2 times 10 to the third. 8.2 times 10 to the third. All right, where do I get those numbers from? Well, I would look those up in a table. I would give you those values um, on a quiz or exam. And, well, they're going to be take home now. <laughs> we'll figure it out. You'll just, we'll just work together. We'll get through this. Um, so there are some interesting things here. So uh, we have these two equilibria, and so what, what's interesting about this? Well, in the first case, what's our value of K? Well, it's big, quote unquote big. It's greater than one. And so in the first reaction, our formation of the um, uh, silver uh, single ammonium, ammonia, sorry, ammonia, complex ion there, uh, the product is favored, heavily favored. Well, our Kf for the second reaction is also big. In fact, it's even bigger than Kf for the first reaction. So this product is, is even more favored. Now there's something interesting. Let's combine this with, let's say, oh, uh, I don't know, what does the text do here? Silver chloride. Let's look at silver chloride. And let me change colors here. So I could have AgCl solid and give us Ag plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. What's our K here? I know you guys can't answer me. Our K here is Ksp, right? Yeah, because this is not very soluble. We go ahead and look that up in a table and see that Ksp for silver is like 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10, something like that. Yeah, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10. Okay, now let's think about this for a minute. What's going on here? Well, I'll you know, cover this top part up and just focus on the blue one here. Silver chloride is not that soluble, a little bit dissolves. But if we add ammonia, now we have another equilibrium, two equilibria actually, that we need to account for. So adding ammonia effectively removes some of the silver ions from solution, making the silver monoammonia ion here. Well, that can react further with ammonia and is favorable to make the diammonia um, silver uh, species. Oops, I forgot the positive charge here. Sorry about that, guys. And um, re removing more of that, which in turn causes more of the silver plus to be removed. So think back to the common ion effect. 
and um, well, the common ion effect resulted in the opposite, so less solubility. This is sort of like um, changing the pH of certain uh, compounds, certain solutions. So you guys saw that last time, Wednesday, I guess, Wednesday the um, uh, 11th? Yeah, Wednesday the 11th, we talked about that. So it's similar. The ammonia in this case, I mean, we're, it changes the pH, but, but that's not the important part. The important part is the ammonia reacting with the silver ion to make the new complex ion. Now we could add all these reactions together. Yes, just like, say, Hess's law, combining reactions. And so if I add all these together, so right here, sum of reactions. Um, I'm going to end up canceling a bunch of things. And if you guys want to do this, you can. And my net equation is going to be AgCl. Oops. Let's try this again. AgCl solid plus, well, let's see, that guy's going to cancel that guy. And that silver is going to cancel that as well. So I'm going to have two ammonias here plus two NH3 aqueous. And that's going to react to give me that guy, AgNH32 plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. And now what's K for this overall reaction? Well, K for when you add reactions together, K is just equal to the Ks for the individual reactions multiplied together. So K total equals KSP times KF1 times KF2. And if you actually do that multiplication, um, the number that you end up getting, at least according to the text, is 2.8 times 10 to the minus 3. So now that's interesting. Now we could do calculations involving this, and the text actually goes through this exact example, and you can determine the solubility of silver chloride in the presence of ammonia. So if you have an aqueous ammonia solution, the silver chloride would be more soluble. In just regular water, I forgot to add here, this is H2O. In just regular water, we've got a KSP that's really small, so our solubility is going to be on the order of what? Four times, four times 10 to the minus, uh, four times 10 to the minus five, something like that. Whereas here, our solubility is going to be something more like, um, gosh, I don't know, 10 to the minus one or so. <laughs> and so this is much more soluble, uh, or at least the silver chloride dissolves to a much greater extent um, in the presence of the ammonia. And it's because of the formation of this complex ion. So you can, look at all the processes that are going on, and if you've got equilibrium constants for them, you could combine all those and get one big one, one big equilibrium constant, and that would uh, enable you to figure out how soluble silver chloride really is in ammonia. Now, I'm not gonna ask you to do that. Um, maybe some practice problems, I think. Uh, I, I still need to get that chapter 16 practice problem set posted. Um, but on exams, quizzes, uh, stuff that we'll deal with after spring break, um, I'll ask you qualitatively about this. So you have to think about it. It's just like, you know, when we were looking at fluoride ions and we added acid, HCl, well, the H plus and the F minus combined to form hydrofluoric acid, which is a weak acid, so it's molecular and it just stays in solution. This is analogous. This is kind of the same thing. Our ammonia and our silver combine with that coordinate covalent bond, forming 
one of these complex ions, and these guys float around in solution. They don't bump into chlorine and precipitate, bump into chloride and precipitate, so that doesn't happen. So take home message for this lecture, I um, wanted to show you guys what complex ions are just briefly. We'll go into more detail in the next chapter. And then look at yet another type of equilibria, this time involving the complex ions. Great, thanks, and uh, I'll talk to you later.